Hello and welcome to CBS News in Brief. My name is Yunus Odeko. A two-year-old baby has died in Hargeisa General Hospital because the hospital was short of medical oxygen. This is the second case of death in Hargeisa Hospital for lack of medical oxygen since New Year's Eve. Khatra Halgan, a former reporter at local television stations, reported the latest tragic death to the lack of oxygen in the public hospital. Khatra said she took her niece to the hospital but was informed that oxygen was not available at the hospital. They were referred to a private company that fills concentrated oxygen cylinders. On the process, the child perished. The anguished aunt took her grief to social media. She asked her followers the point of a general hospital without the simple facility such as a medical oxygen. The hospital have an oxygen producing facility but was working under capacity for a while now. Besides the shortage, the slowdown in oxygen production caused steep medical bills at the government hospital. A patient who needs mechanical breathing may have to pay 100 US dollars in oxygen bills only in a day. The rehabilitation and reopening of Somaliland's oldest technical and vocational training school in Boro are contingent on government's commitment to partial funding with a half a million US dollars. That announcement was made by the former Minister of National Planning, Abdrahman Haj Osman Abdi. The minister who visited Germany last year said he met with a German organization that is willing to rehabilitate the school. That is if Somaliland's government is ready to commit paying part of the cost. Minister Shibin said the technical school could open doors for students this summer if the government makes the commitment. According to him, the German organization will pay three million and a half dollars while Somaliland's government ought to contribute half a million dollars. The Buro Technical Institute, named the German school, is the oldest vocational secondary school in Buro. It was established in 1964 with the help of the Western German government. The school produced a boost of impressive alumni ranging from five-star generals, members of parliament, current and former ministers, but unfortunately, the school was closed during the civil war in Somalia, with the successive government in Somaliland failing to reopen it. The government of Turkey has vowed to continue supporting Somalia in rebuilding the country's infrastructure in spite of Al Shabaab's attack against Turkish nationals. In a statement, Turkey condemned a terrorist attack in Afgoye town, 30 kilometers outside Somalia's capital, Mogadishu. The defense ministry said on Twitter, we cast and condemn the terrorist attack which targeted innocent civilians in Somalia and injured 11 other civilians including four Turkish citizens. Turkey will continue to stand by its Somali brothers in their fight against terrorism, said the ministry statement. Turkey's uh, foreign minister Mevlu Kavuzlogu also condemned the attack, adding on Twitter, the attack in Somalia will not deter our fight against terrorism. The minister wished a quick recovery for the injured, saying Turkey will closely watch their condition, including those being treated in a Turkish-built hospital in the capital, Mogadishu. Turkey's health minister, Fahrettin Koka, said six Turkish nationals and nine Somali citizens were wounded in the bombing, with two in critical conditions and undergoing surgery. Al-Shabaab has claimed the responsibility for the attack, saying it was targeting Turkey officials and Somali police. The Somali government has suspended a multi-million dollar project deal to develop major towns in Somalia hours after finance representative of some regional states inked the agreement. According to an article carried by the Somali National News Agency, Somali Prime Minister Hassan Ali Khaire ordered the project to be halted for further review and inclusion of all states. The agreement was signed on Saturday by Finance Minister Abdurrahman Duala Bela and representatives from Puntland, Jubaland, and Southwest State. The 112 million US dollars worth urban infrastructural development agreement was meant for Baidawa, Mogadishu, Kismayu, and Garowe towns. The suspension following public uproar in social media regarding the deal, with some of the public claiming two regional states, including Galmudug and Hirshabelle, were left out. Some of the netizens hailing from the two regional states have condemned what they called a move to exclude their states. They complained of discrimination of other regions in development projects. 
Responding to the complaint by the public, the Prime Minister called for more discussion and review of the agreement. In December 2019, World Bank approved a 112 million US dollars grant to deliver prioritized infrastructure in Somalia cities and strengthen municipal government capacity. The global lender said the Somali Urban Resilient Project will support infrastructural investment in strategic cities such as Mogadishu, Garaweki, Smayu and Baidoa. It was also laying the groundwork for expansion to cities in the states of Galmudug and Hirishabel led to achieve national coverage. The financing for the Somalia's Urban Resilience Project includes a 50 million US dollars International Development Association and 62 million US dollars co-financing from the Somali Multi-Partner Fund. IDA is a division of the World Bank which offers low-cost loans and grants to heavily indebted countries. Somalia qualified for IDA financing in 2018. The government of Ethiopia promoted 65 military officers, including five women, to the ranks of general. Accordingly, six military officers were promoted to the rank of lieutenant generals, 19 officers to major generals, and 40 officers to brigadier generals. During the event held at the Prime Minister's office on Saturday, President Sahil Wok Zaldi awarded the ranks to the officers nominated by the Prime Minister and Commander-in-Chief of the Ethiopian Armed Forces, Dr. Abi Ahmed. The Prime Minister said more women were promoted today to maintain gender equality in the military. Abiy Ahmed stated that the Defence Forces are currently engaged in maintaining peace at home and helping farmers to harvest crops in addition to safeguarding the sovereignty of the country. The appointment of the 65 military generals have two messages, according to the President. She indicated that the first one is a reward for the loyalty and hard work of the appointees to safeguard Ethiopia's interests, while the second message is to put more responsibility on the appointees for the times ahead as the country is going through a complex and historic journey which includes reforms and development programs. That is all we have for you. Thank you for joining us. Have a lovely time.